What's up Bay fam and welcome back to a new video. It's been a while since I made one, so let's go up with a bang. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But honestly, uh, this video actually it's a showcase slash review video because I have a lot of things to show you guys. Uh, some new things that I got myself thanks to trading and purchase as well as some new equipment that I got myself that I think are pretty damn cool and pretty damn useful. Actually, it's just one piece of equipment, but still, it's pretty much a good piece of equipment for every Beyblader outside, out there in the world. If you ever need something like that for your competition practice or just to know exactly what your Beyblades are worth, most of the time they're, well, actually, you know what, this <laughs> doesn't mean anything. But anyways, if you want to know the weight of your Beyblade, it's pretty damn important that you go like I did, thanks to the advice of my good friend, get yourself a digital portable balance because these things are actually damn pretty useful and they are able to give you all the details about your Beyblade weight by gram or whatever other unit of measurement that you need. I prefer to go with gram because technically the tournaments that I am part of are divided into three groups of grams, uh, either light, uh, lightweight, medium weight or heavyweight. And sometimes they can even ho go higher than heavy within the category uh, measurements but it is still considered to be heavyweight. So, before I jump in into uh, showing you all of my Beyblade collection, as well as the trading Beyblade that I got and the purchase Beyblade that I got, I want to sh I want to tell you how the category how the category work and how they are uh, divided. So, if you want to go into the uh, light category, meaning the lowest weight possible, you have to go from 50 and less. So, if your Beyblade is behind. Be under 50 gram, you're good. This is a lightweight bay. If you're over 50 gram but not over 65 gram, you're in the medium category. And if you go over 65 gram, then you are in the heavy category. So, with all that said, let's go with the presentation of my Beyblade within the categories of weight that they possess. And of course, if you see me looking down like this, it's because I have all the Beyblade name and their weight category right here on my phone. I have a lot of Beyblades. <laughs> so let's start with the light category Beyblades. We're not gonna go from uh, lowest to highest. I'm just gonna go with the way that they are placed in my list. So the first Beyblade I'm gonna show you guys is the Beyblade that I actually got thanks to trading. It is the Archer Archeles from the uh, Chozy series or Turbo series if you like it here in America. And yes, since it's the official uh, Tarakatomi Bay, it is able to spread his arrowheads like this to gain more stamina in the battle, in the uh, in the stadium. And of course, when he slow down, they gonna retract and form this amazing form. And honestly, I really love the fact that most of the Beyblade, like we have Valkyrie, which is not Norse mythology, but it is uh, well technically. Yes, it is Norse mythology. Sorry, my bad. You have some Greek mythology as well as some other type of mythology inside of the Beyblade. And honestly, I like that. It, remind, it reminds me of the uh, previous collection and previous series of the original uh, series and all that. Which is kind of cool. And uh, to, be, uh, to tell you the weight of my wonderful Archer Hercules, he is at 49.6 grams, so not too heavy to be out of the light category, but just heavy enough to be inside of that category. The next bay on the list is my Hell Salamada. Honestly, like I said before, I really love this bay. I think it's very awesome. And the fact that these blades are able to shift from attack to defense, I think it's pretty damn cool. And as you guys know, the only modification I did to this bay is to have the Trans Dash Driver. And I did do any modification, I didn't do any modification to Archer Archeles. I received them like this, it is all the official piece of Terracotomy, so I'm pretty damn happy with that. It might be missing some few stickers, but honestly that I don't care. The weight of Hell Salamander is 47.4, so then again, not heavy enough to go out of the light category, but heavy enough to be inside of that category. Mm. Sorry. <sighs> The next, the next Beyblade inside of the light category is my Emperor Fornius from the Chozy series again. I'm pretty sure that Chozy Bays are pretty damn light enough to be inside of the light categories. Of course, they 
probably not at, uh, as light as the uh, series before them, Main Evolution or God Slayer or anything like that, but they're then pretty light again to be inside of the light category. So Emperor Phonius, as I said before, it is a trade bay. I traded some of my parts from other Beyblade to be able to get this wonderful piece of heart. And of course everything with it is original except for the driver. Normally it comes with the uh, yard driver. But I decided to put inside this uh, instead, sorry, not inside, but instead, this wonderful uh, green, uh, dark green atomic driver, which is a pretty damn cool defense type driver for a defense type bay. And the last, oh yeah, Fornius is, sorry, I was uh, forgetting to say the weight of Fornius, 49.1 gram. So then again, um, pretty much the same weight as uh, Archer Achilles minus uh, 0.5 gram but still pretty damn good and it is uh, light enough to be inside with light categories instead of being inside of the medium category. Now, the last bay is more like a collection bay. Uh, it's a full-on Tarakatomi bay that I purchased and it is uh, one of the first bay released inside of the uh, Chozy series as well as the uh, Chozy, uh, not Chozy, sorry, inside of the uh, Z uh, series but technically chosen series at the same time as a uh, Z uh, Valkyrie. It is the one and only Z Achilles. <laughs> Honestly, this bay is really just for uh, collection. I don't think it would not be good to use in competition, but honestly, if you don't want to damage it or if you don't want to just ruin your pieces, sometimes it's better to keep some Beyblade just as collection piece more than anything else. And the weight of the Archiles is 44.9 gram. So less heavy than the three others, but still heavy enough to be inside the category and not heavy enough to be over the category. Now, we're gonna jump from light to medium category with the first bay. Since we finish with uh, the Archiles, why not go with Union Archiles? This Union Archiles was purchased, not trade was purchased and like I said before in a review video of this wonderful baby boy he is all the pieces of the startup Terakatomi Bay without being from Terakatomi because he is from Asbro Pro Series honestly I'm still surprised by the fact that they made something that good <laughs> and the weight of this little bad boy is 61.5 so then again remember that the medium category is between 50 gram and 65 gram so this bad boy here is light enough to be inside of the medium category without being too light to be outside of the medium category but not too heavy enough to go over the limit and be in the heavy category so that's pretty damn cool the next bay i'm gonna show you is the first uranus a beyblade that i was able to to gain thanks to trade all parts are from tarkatomi except for one part which is from Pro Series, it is the uh, ultimate reboot dash driver that decided to put on this Beyblade to make him more of an attack type than a defense type due to the fact that they don't have another 2D chassis to be able to put on him and make him more accurate to the original version of um, Lane Valhalla. But it is still a pretty good Beyblade and the weight of this one is 51 gram exactly, no extra digits or anything. 51 grams is the weight of this bay, but I still think it's pretty damn cool for him to be in the light, in the medium category. The next bay is a bay that actually, like my uh, Hell Salamander, that I love very, very much because honestly, I just love the design and I love the gimmick united to this bay. It is a bay that I got from trading. Hazard Kerbius. Honestly, it's a freaking green bay, okay? My birth color is the color of Jade, okay? I don't say that he's the color of Jade, but he's fucking green, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry for the for the F word. He is effing green, goddammit. He's beautiful. He's wonderful. I love him really much. He's one of my favorite bay. Not a collection bay because I still can use him in tournament. And thanks to a few modifications I did, all the pieces are from Terakatomi except for the frame, which came, the frame that I put on the disc, which come from uh, Asbro from Perfect Phoenix, and when I say that this MFO is green, I mean everything on him is green, okay? From the energy layer from the Turbo series or Chosy series, from the actual Forge disc being green, from the borrowed, not bo technically, the 
driver from his last evolution used with this one the yard dash driver which is dark green i must admit i'm in freaking heaven <laughs> this bay this bay is really just freaking amazing okay <laughs> and i did do some battle of um azard kirbius versus chain kirbius and honestly between the two of them just because of the modification i did to chain kirbius he did defeat a hazard but it was just uh, they're just so cool and the weight of Azard Kerbius is 51.6. Then again, a little bit more heavy than uh, than uh, a first Uranus, but not too much heavy to be outside the category, like I said before. The next Beyblade is from Asbro. It is the, uh, well, Asbro with one piece of Terracatomi, so purchase, but not uh, trade. The uh, Perfect Phoenix. Now, of course, I must admit that myself, I would prefer to have uh, Dread Phoenix as well, or Dead Phoenix. But this bay being part of a random booster is actually pretty damn hard to get. If someone out there knows someone that might have Dread Phoenix from uh, the uh, original Terracatomi set and he wants to either trade it or sell it, send them my way because I'm pretty much interested by it. So yeah, back to Perfect Phoenix. Perfect Phoenix, of course, being full-on um, Asbro, but from the second release of Perfect Phoenix instead of being from the first release, it comes from the uh, Mythical Beast collection. Uh, and of course, within the Mythical Beast collection, something that I learned, they actually remade it, so the armor resists a little bit more to battle than the previous one, which actually was really flimsy and the system was not very, hot, uh, very strong on it, so the, the armor was able to get loose very fast. So yeah, and it has the uh, stamina driver from um, Cyclone Ragnarok. So yeah, this is Perfect Phoenix, and his weight is 57.1, so in the in the category enough, not too heavy to go over, but still pretty much heavy to be able to be inside of the category. The next bay is going to be the Judgment Joker. Now, Judgment Joker itself, right here, it is a pro series bay, but with Terracatomi piece. The Terracatomi piece being the trick driver yes my friend i was able to do some trading to get myself the wonderful trick driver into this collection unfortunately i don't have the original frame that comes with it which is the around frame or the turn frame i don't remember exactly the name of the frame that is the type of chainsaw frame that could be put in either left or right mode but i did place instead the dagger uh, frame that came with uh, prime apocalypse because I thought it would, it was cool to make it a little bit more red into the purplish uh, design. And the weight of this Judgment Joker with all of these parts is 58.8 gram. Pretty much a heavy bay. Not the heaviest inside of this category so far, but a uh, pretty heavy bay. Yeah. The next bay is going to be my Drigger V2 from the Random Booster Set. Uh, Drigger V2 from the DB series, of course. So it is the official Terracatomi release of this remake of Drigger. And honestly, I really love Drigger. Since the first time that they made Beyblade in the year 2000 to here, I really love Drigger. And I was very sad to see Drigger disappear from the face of the earth when Metal Fusion arrived and Beyblade Burst arrives as well. But hey, lucky for us, they were remade. So can be against that. The weight of this bay being the heaviest in this category, uh, no, not the heavy, sorry, this, no, he's not one of the heavy, yes, he is in the heavy because he's in, he's in the 60s, but he's not the heaviest inside of this, inside of this category. He, uh, Jigger V2 has the weight of 61.7 grams, so not so bad actually, not too heavy to be outside the category like I said before. Just heavy enough to be inside the medium category without any problem. The next bay is the heaviest inside of this category. With part from Asbro, Terracatomi and a mix of everything that makes him one of the most badass bay ever that I ever put. No, not the most high a badass, but one of the badasses. Prime Apocalypse with the Eclipse uh, armor or Bing Bang armor, depending on how you like to say it. <clears throat> this bay of course has the Eclipse armor from Terracatomi because Asbro never released them. 
the uh, general uh, layer is from Asbro, the forge disc is from Asbro, and the driver is from Tarakatomi, is an atomic uh, driver from a beautiful dark and purple, really beautiful, love the coloring. Honestly, I would like I would have preferred to have the this ring here in red. It would have been more badass <laughs> into the actual idea of the customization of the bay, but it's still pretty cool. And I did decide to put a defense driver because honestly, me and some of my friends realized that even though Prime Apocalypse is supposed to be a full attack type, it is sometimes better to have him either in stamina or defense because due to his shape, most of the time it looks more like a defense type bay more than an attack type. So. And the weight of a Prime Apocalypse is 64.6, so 0.4 gram, just enough to be at the limit of the middle collection, uh, medium section, to move to the heavy uh, section. So honestly, it's pretty damn cool that he's able to be at that weight. The next bay inside of this collection is going to be the Venom Devilus. Now, this Venom Devilus. All the parts are from Asbro. None of them are from Tarakatomi. But the next part that comes with him is actually part of Tarakatomi. Now, normally, when you buy uh, Venom Devilus with uh, with the Erase mode as well, you also have the Bullet Driver that comes with it. Unlike many people out there, I know that the Bullet Driver might be just like for show and everything like that. I still think that the gimmick is pretty damn cool. And honestly, I would like to have the Blade Driver one day, maybe to just add it to him. But it's not one of my main uh, priority because I did put on this wonderful bay, the uh, Destroy Dash Driver. So technically, he still looks like the original uh, Devilus, Diabolus, plutôt. But it is not fully uh, original uh, build up. And of course, thanks to trading, I was able to also get the Erase uh, Blades. So if I want, I can actually change the mode of my Devilus from right to left, which is pretty damn cool. So yeah. And either in Venom or Erase, Diablo's weight is 57.7 grams. So technically, no matter the mode that you decide to put on, it's still the same weight. Maybe that the bullet driver might have some weight with it because, I don't know, maybe the driver has some metal inside. But other than that, the weight of this bay is 57.7. Up to the next bay being full-on Tarakatomi. Well, not full-on Tarakatomi, I won't lie about that. All the pieces are from Asbro, but the fact that I put it up together like this almost looks like the original Tarakatomi. The only difference is the driver. It is the Zwei Luenor, or Zwei Longinus, if you prefer. The original bay comes with the uh, Zwei Blades, the Drake, uh, uh, the Drake Forge Disc, and the Spiral Driver. I do not possess a Spiral Driver, so I decide to put a Destroy Driver on him instead, which is pretty much accurate, because if you look at all the other form of Luenor, sometimes he does have the Destroy Driver on him. So, yeah, it is a dash destroy driver as well like my uh, De uh, Devilus, Diabolus or Devilus purple and it does it, it also is pretty much heavy but honestly not that much it is one of the secondary heaviest inside of the uh, middle collection medium uh, section plutôt uh, Zwei Lenoir is 59 gram exactly so not too much in the 60s but still pretty much around one of the heaviest case the next bay inside of this uh, collect inside of this section one of one of the uh, one close to the last one sorry I was about to press stop I don't know why it is the Armony Pegasus Armony Pegasus that came in the same time as Union Achilles and Prime Apocalypse inside of the collection of Turbo Series uh, bay, not Turbo Series or his Pro Series collection and honestly unlike um, the other two. This one doesn't have anything related to uh, the original version of Terracatomi, unfortunately. But it's still a pretty damn good stamina type bay. So yeah. Uh, the weight of Harmony Pegasus is 57.4. Which is a pretty good weight for a medium class, honestly. I can't lie about that, it's pretty damn cool. The next bay is a bay that I got from trading. And actually I'm pretty damn happy for that because, like I said, I would have loved to have 
instead of perfect phoenix i would have loved to have um dead phoenix or dread phoenix depending on how you want to call him but i'm happy to get my to to have been able to get revive phoenix official terakotomi beyblade revive phoenix that i was able to gain uh, to get thanks to trading and all the pieces are original everything is there friction and everything and the weight of this little bad boy is exactly 53.7 gram so it's pretty damn cool so let just let me just put all of these bays inside of my case here Whoa! judgment joker was about to fall off my table so i'm just gonna put these away for now to make some space sorry about that because we're gonna enter into the heavy category and the heavy category actually has uh, the review inside because uh, technically I have three new bays to show you that I was able to get to actually claim uh, recently. Not by trading, but by purchase. So I'm happy to actually show them to you guys and to do a review because they're bays that I wanted to have since they were announced inside of the Pro Series uh, section uh, collection. So I'm pretty damn happy with that. But of course we're going to start with this at the top of the list and go all the way to the bottom. The first payblade I'm going to show you from the heavy category. So remember, the heavy category are between 65 gram and 80 gram, and they could be considered the ultimate weight if they go over 75 gram, uh, 85 gram, and 75 gram. So my heaviest bay, I have two heavy, no, three very heavy bays inside of this category. And when I say very heavy, is because they are at the limit, I think, compared to the weight that they can have. So let's go with the first one. We have here Ace Dragon, but Ace Dragon itself is not the only bay that I have, because some of these bays has more than one form. Uh, like Venom and Erase Devilos are both the same weight. Well, Ace Dragon possess two other forms which have their own weight, and thanks to trading, I was able to get the two other forms haha <laughs> i'm not able to build up the entire bay with just a spare part and everything but i'm able to get i was able to get the two other energy ring of this gt bay ace dragon to become glyph and rock so i'm pretty damn happy with that and of course my ace dragon comes with the um I'm not sure exactly what the name of this uh, part is again. I know it's the Forge Disc, but I don't remember the exact name of this Forge Disc. And I did put the uh, Charge Metal Dash Driver on him. Uh, yeah, Charge Metal. The uh, Gatling Dragon Driver, basically. On him to actually make him more like an official uh, Ace Dragon. I know that technically it should not have this full-on metal. It should have some plastic as well. But I'm pretty sure that this looks pretty much better than if it was the plastic one. So, uh, Ace Dragon, technically on his own, is 65.8 gram. So, high enough to be in the heavy category, but not low enough to be outside of the category, to be in the middle category. And I did the weight for Glyph Dragon. With the Glyph Ring, he's at 66.9. And with the Rock, dra uh, the rock Ring... The rock energy layer is at 66.5. So not that high, but still high enough to be part of the heavy category more than the uh, medium category. So that's for Ace Dragon, Glyph Dragon, and Rock Dragon. The next one is my Chain Kerbius. The beautiful, beautiful Chain Kerbius. Like I said, I did some battle with Chain Kerbius uh, before and my Hazard Kerbius. And honestly, I like both designs, but I must admit, between the two of them, I prefer really much, I really much prefer the all green Beyblade right here. But I cannot lie, this one is a pretty damn cool bay with an amazing def and defense system and an amazing uh, weight to him. But he's not anymore full on defense because I did put the metal driver, uh, the metal just or never, never sure exactly. Uh, I think it's the never. This is the metal never driver that I got from one of the over set from DB. I decided to put it with uh, uh, with Kerbius because of the fact of the rubber inside of the core of Kerbius. 
he, the metal is able to grip better without any failing and makes him a very good bay for defense and competition as well. And the weight of this bad boy is 75.8 gram. So yeah, Chain Kerbius, 78, 75.8, sorry. Now, the next bay is my Black Xyford Excalibur, or like I prefer to call him, Tarfing. Now, this Beyblade, you were able to build him thanks to the random booster where you also got the um, Draeger, if I remember correctly. I think it came with this one or it came with the Kerbius, I don't remember. Anyways, I know it comes from a random booster because you needed to get all the pieces to be able to gain this uh, wonderful base. So, all of course, it's original setting. All the pieces never change. It's still the same thing with the dash driver sword and everything. And surprisingly, I thought this was going to be one of my heaviest bay. But he's not. He's probably in the top 5, but not in the top 2. Or top 3, in that case. Sorry. Black Xyphoid Excalibur, weight 78.6 gram. So, still in the heavy category. Considered to be in the ultimate category as well, due to the fact that he's over 75. But technically, since uh, the heavy category goes from 65 to 80 gram, he is still in the heavy category, but ultimate since it could go higher than 80. Depending on the combination that you decide to do with it. Um, <clears throat> the next bay is my Black Prominence Phoenix. Now, I do have... Sorry about that. <clears throat> I do have the uh, Black Chain that I also use some time with this combination instead of having it with the prominence blade. With the black chain, I'm gonna tell you right now, the weight of Phoenix with the black chain is 79.4. So with black chain, 79.4 gram. And with prominence, 79.4 as well. So basically, the armor itself, the, the energy layer, is the same weight as the chain. But it goes with all the other piece that comes with him that makes him heavier. I have the um, overforged disc. And since I purchased myself another copy of a Beyblade that I wanted to have back into my collection, I have the uh, drift driver with him, the original drift driver. So I have right here with me the amazing uh, over disc with drift driver with my black phoenix which make him pretty damn cool and if i don't want to use prominence i could always use the black chain to add more defense into him and with the chain recoil that this uh, piece is able to do whoops oh, almost uh, making fall under the ground luckily for me it didn't happen Eww. so with that uh, black chain phoenix and, prom and black prominence phoenix are both at 79 0.4 grams, which is pretty damn cool. And right now I go with this uh, combination because I did some battle tests and this combination works pretty damn cool. Pretty damn, uh, pretty damn great. So I'm happy with that. Um, my next bay is actually two form of bay blades. Uh, it is this one and this one. Again, two form, but two form that I was able to make into two different bay. The first one is my Zero Barricade Lucifer. So, like I said before, I did some customization to have myself a Lucifer that I can use inside of tournament. And this one is the one that I use inside of tournament. It is the Zero Barricade Lucifer. That is not a defense type anymore. He is more an attack type because I decided to put on him the uh, All Might Driver. And I want to get myself the uh, S-Gear to be able to uh, put on the uh, All Might. Because honestly, I think the S gear would be quite badass with this design. Uh, the weight of Zero Barricade Lucifer with the uh, All Might Driver is 76.3 gram. So pretty damn cool and pretty damn heavy. Can't lie about that. It's still a cool bay. And I really love Lucifer like before. That hasn't changed at all. And his other form that I got, the... Um, Barricade Lucifer, the official Barricade Lucifer, thanks to the sword that he has still on him. Yes, I won't not use the other word. It's not that, okay? Stop saying it is that, okay? God damn it. <laughs> I digress, sorry. 
So yeah, it is the original uh, Barricade Lucifer with the uh, illegal drive, illegal force disc, and I did put my atomic dash driver with him, not to make him in more into a um, competition blade, uh, Beyblade, but more to have the atomic driver with a Beyblade in case I want to change the uh, All Might from this bay to this bay. I could always do the, the change between the battles or before a battle starts. Uh, before a match starts actually to make sure he has a little bit more uh, of a hump with it because the atomic dash driver is pretty damn good and the weight of barricade lucifer is 74.5 gram with this combination right now now the next beyblade i want to show you guys it's a beyblade that also have another form that needs a few uh, pieces i'm gonna show you the pieces so you could actually know which bay I'm talking about. These are the pieces. So I'm pretty sure you know which bay I'm talking about. I'm talking about my Phantom King Belial. Now, Phantom King Belial, the reason why I'm calling him uh, Phantom King Belial is because it's the Belial 3 uh, D, uh, D chip with the Divine Blades, the H gear, the A gear, the D gear, and the VS gear. So it is kind of the perfect Belial, but since it's the last form of Belial we will ever see, it is what I call him the Phantom King Belial. So with that, it is the Phantom King Belial combination with all the new gears, none of the previous one. So no L gear, no S, no S gear, uh, no L gear and no V gear. It is all the new gears that came with the secondary series of Beyblade uh, burst from the latest one we got before Beyblade X comes in and the weight of Phantom King Belial inside of this one inside of uh, this uh, collection he's the second mm, he's a tied heavy one the weight of Phantom King Belial is 80.4 gram yeah 80.4 gram a heavy bay which is considered to be an ultimate bay. So, uh, moving right along, like you saw, I also have a dangerous uh, Belial, which I call the dangerous F Belial because I use the F gear, the Karma disc, and the high charge metal driver, uh, high high charge dash driver. I'm not sure if it's called metal, but it it is the the. The driver that you can get inside of a random booster, one of the high driver, and it is a dash driver, so it makes him a little bit more uh, strong in the idea of being burst. And the weight of this Beyblade, he is the heaviest inside this category because he weighed exactly 82. Point <coughs> sorry, 82.7 gram. So he is a heavy boy. 82.7 grams, so yeah, damn. My next bay, I'm gonna move on from one bay because this one I want to show you guys a little bit, a little bit later. The next bay is my Vanish Fafnir. Yeah, this one I got from trade. I did trade uh, some few bays and parts to be able to get this bad boy. And as you can see, he is, he is in high mode because I decided to use a combination that a friend of mine suggested to me. So you have, of course, the Vanish Blades with the Ratchet Forge Disc and the Kick Driver. So the original driver that comes with Vanish Fafnir with the uh, Ratchet Driver uh, Forge Disc that comes with uh, Wizard Fafnir with all this beautifulness making him at 70.8 gram. This bay is just badass. And it is a Fafnir, so honestly, he's just cool. The next bay is going to be my Zest Archilles. My beautiful Zest Archilles with all of his original part, nothing changed, nothing different from before. The Zest Archilles with all of his wonder, uh, all of his uh, might, uh, mightiest part uh, is in the, the weight of this bay, sorry. Why did I try to, I'm losing my words right now. 74.8 grams, so still in the heavy section. Pretty damn cool, and I really love the fact that you can change his mode from left to right and give him multiple different modes thanks to his shield and blades. It's just... It's a puzzle of a Beyblade, but it's an amazing Beyblade. 
I don't know why I forgot to put a dragon inside the box. The next bay is going to be my ultimate Valkyrie, the secondary ultimate Valkyrie, not the original that was released in the first in the first uh, way, but the second one that was released with Spriggan to give us the VS gear. But honestly, between you and me, I prefer this one better than the original one that they made before due to the fact of the chip being a little bit more or less blue than the original. Because, of course, I have nothing against the original blue of Valkyrie. I really love the actual design of Valkyrie. It's an amazing bay. But sometimes too much of a color could be just too much. And the, the ultimate uh, Valkyrie with all, this, all of his blue was pretty too much blue for me. So... Honestly, this one I prefer him. Uh, of course, it's not the original, so it doesn't have the evolve the evolution driver, but it still has a pretty damn cool driver and pretty damn good as well. Um, I did some battle with him before, and is just very good on his own. So the weight of Ultimate Valkyrie Mark II, as we can say, is seventy point four. So not too heavy to go into the eighties, but heavy enough to be inside the category. The next bay is going to be, of course, the bay that was released in the same time as our friend uh, Ultimate Valkyrie Mark II. It is Burst Spriggan. Now, of course, you know me, I love Burst Spriggan. I love Spriggan in general. The red, the gold, and everything like that just mix well together. The fact that he can change from left to right mode like uh, Zest Achilles, like he always has able to be able to do in the past form, of um, Spriggan, I think it's pretty damn cool. And even though it doesn't have uh, the Quattro driver, I think the Fusion Dash driver is still pretty damn cool and pretty damn useful as a driver. And of course, all the pieces are the original combination pieces. And the weight of Burst Spriggan is 75.7. So yes, he is heavier than Valkyrie, but still pretty damn cool anyways. <laughs> The next bay is going to be my Gatling Dragon. Now, Gatling Dragon, as we know, is a pretty damn heavy bay as itself because it's Dragon and he's just that badass. But you might wonder if you give the Ace Dragon the uh, driver that comes with the Gatling Dragon, what driver does he have now? Well, boom. <laughs> I put the Jump Driver from Save Your Valkyrie up on. Um, Gatling Dragon because for two reasons. First of all, I think it just looks cool and it reminds me a bit of the um, motorized driver that he has when he was Command Dragon or in this case, I don't remember, just Command Dragon because I don't remember the Japanese name, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I think it's pretty damn cool to have uh, the jump driver on him because he reminds me of the previous uh, driver that Command Dragon had in the uh, Beyblade series and the fact that I did did so I did do some try and he beat up Valkyrie and Burst Spriggan into a one-on-one -on -one battle and the jump driver works out actually pretty well with him. So the weight of Gatling Dragon is 80.4. He is the second heaviest Beyblade uh, exequo with Phantom King, Belial being 80.4. They are the same weight. So that's pretty damn crazy. Okay, the next bay is my, of course, Greatest Raphael, as you can have seen. Greatest Raphael, with all of his original piece, with the high dash driver, um, the high extend dash driver, uh, actually, and his original overforged disc. Greatest Raphael, weight is 73.2. So, not one of the heaviest in this category, but still one of a good weight for him. To be inside of the heavy category. Now, <laughs> one of the bay I wanted to show you before starting the actual review part of this video is actually a Beyblade that I'm actually am very happy to, uh, that I was able to get back. Lucifer, the end. So Lucifer was the first bay that I got from Japan from Tarakatomi. Uh, I did get variant Lucifer before. It was one of my first bay that I actually review many times on this uh, YouTube channel, as well as his other form like Lucifer's The End and all the mix-up that I did with Lucifer's The End chip and variant Lucifer core and all that craziness. 
But I was able to get myself another copy of Lucifer The End. And the reason why I needed to get another copy of him is because inside of the chip, one of the little uh, peg that holds him in, in place, okay? One of these little thing here broke. So I wasn't able to use my Lucifer ZN for like ever. I needed to get myself another Lucifer ZN. So instead of just getting either just the chip from someone that wanted to get rid of it, I decided to get another one completely. Because as I remember, I did throw away the end uh, layer and forged it and everything because it wasn't useful to me because I wasn't able to put any chip with it. So I'm happy to say that Lucifer Zien is back. He is part of my special collection, meaning that I will probably never use him in battle, in official battle, I might say. But the only reason why I cannot use him in official battle, even though I could if I do just one little change, is because of the driver. <laughs> this driver, this heffing driver, is so freaking good that he was now banned away from every tournament. I'm not sure if I can use him in the free-for-all tournament when the weight doesn't matter and the piece doesn't matter. That I need to ask my friends for that. Or maybe he's gonna watch this video and tell me in the comments. I don't know. But anyways, because of this driver, the drift bearing driver, it is impossible for me to use him in competition unless I change the driver for another driver that I have which is not that much of a diff uh, not that much of a big deal but it is still pretty damn sad that I have to do one changes for this bay to be able to play in tournaments <sighs> well in the worst case scenario I could always take the drift driver from uh, Prominence Phoenix and just use it with him it will be able to work anyways and the weight of this wonderful uh, bay Lucifer ZN is 74.3 now that we are finished with the quote-unquote showcase it's time for the review which I'm gonna make inside of another video because this one is already too long so I will see you guys in a few minutes 